if he can do it again. Hey, when we come back, we're going to talk to the man that went for this wild ride. It's Alan Johnson. He's the subject of our Power 8 Power Time. That's when we come back here to Gainesville Raceway. Back here at the Mac Tools Gator Nationals. A little action from this weekend. Jack Coughlin, you're riding on board as he finally qualified in his last effort to get into the 16-car field. Time now, though, for our Power Aid Power Time. And in this week's edition, first stock driver Alan Johnson told us that his father and co-crew chief, Roy, was his inspiration for climbing back behind the wheel after a very serious wreck six years ago right here at Gainesville. Alan survived what some have called the most frightening ever. You know, I've still got a little lasting uh, elbows and knees that uh, hang with me every now and then and remind me of it. But what that did was teach me how to be a driver. At that point, I thought I could drive through anything. Rick Stewart, uh, Rick put his arm around my dad on the starting line. and They just stood there until the radio. Dad didn't even go down there. When you do this kind of stuff, if you stay out a while, you'll get uh, real scared and you'll think about it. If you don't have time to think about it, well, that's the reason I put him in the car just as quick as we could get one and, and sent him down the track. My dad had me in a car two days later, and uh, I was so sore they had to physically lift me in and out of the car. Couldn't get in and out of it. When I dropped the clutch the first time, it hurt so bad. I begged him not to, I, I can't do this today, but he said, you're going to at least go to third gear to, you know, just make sure you feel comfortable. Uh, it's the right thing to do, just get me right back in there and just took all that away. And two weeks ago in Phoenix, Allen reached the winner's circle, becoming the first driver in 10 years to take a Dodge to first place in the Power A Pro Stock standings. Well, let's talk a little more on Pro Stock because two-time defending champion Greg Anderson is only 81 points out of first place, but nine drivers are ahead of him. Will a second straight win in the swamp get the champ back on track? Or will this year's Pro Stock parody continue with a third different driver stepping up to take home the Wally? Take a look at the ladder. As you see this ladder, 15 out of 29 racers who attempted to qualify set career best. We have the quickest Pro Stock field ever. The bump spot. You had to run better than the national record, which was just set like two years ago at 670 and change. Unbelievable. It's going to be good. Let's show you what happened in the opening round of Pro Stock. First up, it'll be Warren Johnson and Larry Morgan. And don't count the professor out of this championship, Chase. He gets 6.70 seconds on the elapsed time and takes down Larry Morgan in opening round action. Next up, Jim Yates and Jake Coughlin. Bit of a staging duel here, and it paid off for Yates. An 0.25 light to an 0.50, and in a hole shot, Yates takes the win, 6.71 to a 6.70. Uncharacteristic for Jake to be that late off the starting line, but look at him working that wheel. Got a little bit loose on that second, first second gear shift. Unfortunately for him, he's going on. That would bring us up to Kirk Johnson and Greg Stanfield. Bit of an upset here. Stanfield takes the win light, 6.711 to a 6.715. Take a look at the Q photo finish cam, and there is the margin of victory as Greg Stanfield moves in to second round pro stock action. That brings us to Dave Conley and B. Gaines. Conley in the left lane. Winner back at Pomona. Takes a step towards winning here. 6.70 in the elapsed time, 205 miles an hour. Then Kenny Koretsky in the left lane, the number three qualifier against Jake's teammate, Richie Stevens. And it would be Stevens getting to the strike first. 6.73 seconds to a 6.75 for Koretsky. Points leader, Alan Johnson in the Mopar, over in the right lane. He will not be the points leader by the end of today. Mike Edwards puts him on the trailer. 6.733 to a 6.737 elapsed time. And then it's Greg Anderson up against Ricky Smith. And look out because Greg goes low for the round. The only car in this opening round to go in the 660s. He does a 6.67 elapsed time, 206 miles an hour. And Ryan rounding it out, his teammate Jason Line takes care of Ron Krischer. Krischer gets loose, has to get out of the throttle. Line goes 6.70 seconds in the elapsed time to mark it and moves on to second round. So Greg's got the lane choice over his old boss, Warren Johnson. Dave Conley over Greg Stanfield. Then in the other side, it's going to be Jim Yates with the lane choice over Mike Edwards. Jason Line over Richie Stevens. 
back here at race number three of 23 in the NHRA Powerade Drag Racing Series. It's the Mac Tools Gator Nationals. We're getting ready for the factory hot rods in Pro Stock. Here's our ladder presented by Luton Soil. And it will be our pole sitter, Greg Anderson, with the lane choice over his former boss, Warren Johnson, Dave Conley, and Jim Yates. I uh, also have lane choice as well. And let's show you our Q photo finish for Jim Yates because that margin right there over Jake Coughlin, courtesy an 025 reaction time to Jake's 050, gave him the win in a hole shot. And now he finds himself in the right lane, or I should say in the left lane, against that man over there, Mike Edwards. Both these teams really have turned around their programs this year. Jim Yates looked very good in Phoenix. He was low ET of every round in Phoenix before losing that on that whole shot to Ron Krischer. And Mike Edwards, he was stuck in the 660 range all through qualifying here in Gainesville. Yates, if you remember, was slow to go in. Bit of a staging duel we told you about with uh, Jeggy. And a mini duel there. Oh, and red light for Edwards. Yates got really lucky on that run because when he let the clutch out, that car went everywhere but straight. But uh, when you when you go red, that's what happens. So Jim Yates, who despite going out in the semifinals at our last race at Phoenix, that, if you remember back there, he ran low for every round of eliminations, even though he got beat in a whole shot back at Phoenix. And here he's done a whole shot, and now he wins on a red light, courtesy of Mike Edwards. Watch on the left side. That thing makes a hard turn to the center line. Look at him reel that thing in. That is an excellent driving job there. That thing was really loose, off, probably all the way through third gear. He still reeled it in and ran it down to the other end, even though he didn't need to. But that's just Jim Yates. He knows how to, he knows how to drive them race cars. So now we get ready for Jason Line in the Grand Am. He'll be up against Richie Stevens in the Mopar Dodge Stratus from Don Schumacher's racing camp. And there he is. Bob Glidden, the crew chief on Richie's car, as well as uh, Jake's car, Jake Coughlin. You know, the Pro Stockers have really been putting on a great show this weekend, Marty. I mean, we saw 14 cars qualify under a 4 seven, I mean, a 670, basically in the 660 range. Uh, quickest field ever. They came out of the first round, they ran pretty good, even though the air was quite a bit worse and the track was greasy. But right now, we saw, you know, based on what we saw with Jimmy Yates and even the fuel cars, we know it's a lot greasier out there right now. So they have to make some pretty good adjustments for this round. Well, we talked about 15 career bests for all the pro stockers out of 29 entries. There were 18 career bests in pro stock motorcycle. And those bikes are coming up next, right after the second round action here in pro stock. Jason Line was first off the line and first to the strike. 6.71 the elapsed time. Both cars managed 205 miles an hour. Well, we saw some good speed there, Marty, but the 60-foot times aren't there. And I think what happens is the track, like we said, a little bit greasy. They can't get aggressive. They're, otherwise, they get a little bit too much wheel speed. But still 205 miles per hour in this kind of air is a very good speed. Let's watch this again. Jason Lyon moved a little bit towards the center line, but he reeled it back in. Kept it stuck pretty good in the middle of the lane and did a good job. And there's your margin of victory. Your Q photo finish. And you can see the difference. Almost half a car length. Down at the starting line, fan man saying, friends saying, okay, we like it. Now that brings us up to Dave Conley in the left lane, Greg Stanfield over in the right lane. Stanfield, of course, the number 12 qualifier, dumped Kurt Johnson unceremoniously in that uh, opening round of action. There you see the numbers for Greg. For Conley, he's the number four qualifier. He took care of business over V Gaines, and there's the man who builds his horsepower, Bill Grumpy Jenkins. Boy, does he know how to build horsepower, and does this kid, Dave Connolly, know how to drive. But Greg Stanfield, he is no slouch either. He's, I mean, very good mechanic, knows how to work on these cars, and he, and he does a good job of driving. So this is a good matchup right here. This is only the third time in their career that these two have uh, gone head-to-head -head in pro stock competition. They, they're dead even. They've each won one of those races. Yeah, and you got to raise a slight edge to Dave Connolly, but... You know, the, the termini factor is that racetrack is a little bit greasy. Dave Conley probably makes a little bit more horsepower with Bill Jenkins, but if they miss on that setup, Greg Stanfield can get them. Oh, power out for Stanfield. 
And Dave Conley goes 6.74 seconds in the elapsed time department. Another run at 205 miles an hour. So Dave Conley going back to his uh, second semifinal in three races this year. Remember, he went all the way to win back in Pomona. Meanwhile, back in Bob Gilbertson's pit, they're getting ready. So they are moving on in competition in Funny Car. Back out on the track, you're riding on board with Greg Anderson. This car has been a rocket ship this weekend. Every single pass has been in the 660s. You know, everybody that was predicting his demise, which I don't think there was very many, I mean, he is back because not only is he running better than anybody else, but he's back to like he was last year. I mean, he's two or three hundred better on just about every session going through qualifying the first round. Now, remember, the man over in the other lane, Warren Johnson, right now is on his last tour of Gainesville, and here he is at 25 races. Only once did he fail to qualify, and look at that record. Ten finals, nine times he took home the Wally. His first win, 1984. And right now, Warren coming into this round was tied with Dave Conley for the points lead, believe it or not. Remember the year he had last year? It was a disaster. These guys turned it around. On board with Greg, both cars pre-staged. There's Warren. as he was the number nine qualifier with the best run of a 668 and Greg falls off just enough to a 670 look at the speed 206 miles an hour but Warren Johnson takes out the Powerade champion here in second round action what can you say about the professor I mean he left first and never looked back now Warren Johnson he's not afraid to get after we've seen him though a number of times get very loose and sideways because he's just overly aggressive but he hit the setup just right on this run. Look at this. Wheels up, nice and straight, hitting those shift points just perfect. And that WJ horsepower on the other end was able to hold off Greg Anderson. Watch Greg here. Just He was just soft down low. Just didn't have enough to be able to drive around WJ on the other end. And that's the end of his day. Good race, though. And look at wife Kim. She can't believe it, saying, man, we got beat. And there is the professor at the far end of the racetrack. We've got to go to break. There are the numbers. WJ's got the lane choice over Dave Conley, and so does Jason Lye. Probably going to be. We get ready for Pro Stock and take a look at the ladder presented by Lucas Oil. WJ looking for another win in his swan song season over Dave Conley, the youngster, who's already won once this year. And the first matchup will be Jason Lyme with the lane choice over Jim Yates. And Jason's going to be in that right lane, Jim in the left lane. These two have never met in competition until right now. shot 6.72 seconds and Jim Yates who started the day with a whole shot win of his own gets whole shot in here in the semifinals by Jason Lyne. Let's go on replay here I mean Jason Lyne I mean kind of unusual I mean this car makes a lot of horsepower he just probably missed the combination a little bit Jim Yates He's been running good all year long, all three races, but, you know, there's a margin of victory at the other end, and Jason Lyons going to the final. The Q photo finish cam gives you the margin of victory, almost half a car length, as Jason goes to the ninth final of his career and first here in 2005. So, as we get ready for our next semifinal, let's put a period on Funny Car. Let's go to Gary. 
Well, the new daddy is going to the finals. That's the great news. You were awfully close to the wall. What did it look like from your seat? Well, yeah, we were. I mean, the car just uh, was dead straight, perfect run, and uh, got down there. It, it felt like it had a hole out on the left side, uh, but the, the pipes don't look like it, but that's probably what happened. And, you know, have our arms crossed, and it's just not coming back. But uh, that's for my, for my wife, Michelle. Honey, I love you. You proved yourself this week. You're awesome. You're the best wife in the world. And uh, for Matco Tools, we're going to the final at the Gator Nationals. It doesn't get any better. It gets a little better. We'll try to do that next round. All right, thanks, Gary. As you're on board with the professor, he's in the right lane, 61 years old. He could become the oldest professional winner in NHRA Pro Stock history. Dave Conley, 22 years old, already won at Pomona this year. In fact, these guys met back at the Winter Nationals, Conley winning that first matchup. Here they go one more time. Another hole shot. He was first off the line. An 033, five one hundredths quicker than Warren on the tree. He runs a 671 to Warren's 667 at 206. Warren's going to be kicking himself. He's got the performance, but he just didn't have the reaction time on the starting line as Dave Conley goes to the 10th final of the year of his career and second this year. That was a great run by Warren Johnson. And what does he get for it? He's going home. Unbelievable. That was a very good run for these conditions. You see, Grumpy, look at that. He likes his driver right there. Cue photo finish cam, and there's the margin of victory. 88 ten thousandths of a second, Gary. Jason Line, you now know who you're going to go up against, Dave Conley, in the finals. Uh, your thoughts about that matchup, and I believe that both of you were whole shot winners. I think he's got lane choice by just a fraction. Well, I guess if you can't go fast, you know, at, least, uh, at least have a good life. But uh, Dave is tough, that's for sure, and uh, we're going to have our work cut out for us. But uh, we've got a great team, and I think we can do it today. Now, talk about a turnaround. This team has come 180 degrees from... So that means that as we get ready now, we'll turn our attention towards... Whoa! Some of the safety workers at the other end trying to get him off the track. And uh, one of the guys sort of fell in there. Hope he's okay. There are the side-by-side -side burnouts between Jason Lyon in the left lane, Dave Conley in the right lane. Let's talk a little weather. It's very similar to what we saw in the first round, Marty. 74 degrees, 40 percent humidity. Track temperature, 95 degrees. Density altitude, about 1,478 feet. But the key is we have cloud cover right now. So that's going to make the rubber, even though it's still fairly warm, it's going to be a little bit tighter in the previous rounds. So they should be able to get just a little bit more aggressive on their tune-up, probably than they were able to in the second and semifinal rounds. Both looking for their fifth career wins. Head to head, Jason is uh, five up, three down against Dave Conley. Two of the young guns right here, very good drivers, both of them. You see Bill Grumpy Jenkins there making the horsepower from Dave Connolly. Obviously, Greg Anderson and Jason Lyon, teammates, uh, they, they also make a lot of horsepower. Two very good drivers, like I said, good matchup here. The only time these guys have met in a final, that was Memphis in 2004. Jason won that matchup. Keep an eye on the tree. Jason has had better reaction times today than he's had all season long, even going back into last year. Here we go. Whoa, Conley! Jason drives around it. 6.71 seconds, 205 miles an hour. Conley had a 006 light. Fifth win for Jason Lyon's career first this year. Wow, what a race. That was a, that was a race. Dave Conley, he drilled the tree. Like you said, boy, 006. That's six thousandths of a second from perfect. Seven thousandths of a second from red lighting and taking him out of it. But Jason Lyon, he had the horsepower to drive around on the other end. Watch it here. Dave Conley fell off. I thought he'd run a little bit better there. I don't know if they just missed on the setup, had a little bit too much tire spin. But whatever the result, 
There it is, a happy man, Greg Anderson, with his boy Jason Line went getting the win. There's the cute photo finish cam, and you see the margin there, 12 one thousandth of a second. And hey, uh, let's go talk to the first time. Let's go to Gary. Jason, you're telling me you made a mistake, and yet you get the Wally? Yeah, I thought that was our secret. <laughs> yeah. oh, I did make a mistake. I've done it twice this week, and I messed up shifting, but... Uh, uh, the guys, uh, guys did a great job, and the car, uh, car carries through. How about that Pontiac? Thing runs good. Yeah, you drove around him at the end, and anytime you get to victory lane, driving around anybody, I don't care where or when, got to be great. That's right. I'm not proud. So it's it a great deal, and I want to thank all the guys at the shop because in the last two weeks we've been struggling, and now everybody worked their butts off. So appreciate it. Big step in the right direction, obviously, for these guys. He said an understatement of the day. <laughs> Certainly.